Hey there, so today I want to return to the wonderful world of comic book professionalism, and I want to talk about the artist Richard Pace. Now, Richard Pace is out there yet again trying to brandish the, well, you're out here in defense of the Klan. You're out here in defense of the Nazis, and of course, he's throwing it at Edwin Boyette. I think that this stuff is some of the most egregious stuff that you see on the internet, right there behind doxing and threats, because this kind of stuff is what you see that is aimed at reputation, that is aimed at vocation. It tries to destroy and dismantle, and this, it's about one step away from a lawsuit. I mean, seriously, when you get into this kind of stuff, this is how people lose jobs. This is how people get sued, because of course, as he wants to say, this picture here, you know, any feedback to it, this is in defense of the Klan. Of course, I always wonder, with doodles like that, I wonder if this, if you talk about that too, are you defending the Klan as well? You know, and if you go out and you talk about someone's feelings, about being able to go and to not only show political intolerance, but to go out and to out and out discriminate, is that talking about the Klan as well? But this is, seems to pretty much be par for the course. For somebody that talks about guys who are totally not Nazis, upset about a book about punching Nazis. You know, even though when you go out and you look at those books, oftentimes they define who exactly is a Nazi in their world and, well, interestingly enough, they wear hats just like this and they vote for specific people out there. Now, that should be troubling to anyone, too. I mean, when you think about this, this should not be a line that is right or left. This should be a line that is right or wrong. You should shouldn't go out and you shouldn't call for a political intolerance or political discrimination because you're tarring and feathering people as part of the Klan or you're doing that and calling them Nazis. Because if you look, if you look at our social lexicon right now, that has allowed people to step forward, and that has allowed them to espouse violent rhetoric. And when I say violent rhetoric, punch a Nazi, yeah, these people talk about that all the time. How they want to go out, and they want to hurt people simply because. Now, people like Edwin Boyette bring that up, and well, people like Richard Pace, yeah, they hate that idea. It's interesting, too, that people like Richard find the time to draw pictures like this, or again, the other pictures like this, when you consider they have things like this, where they have a five-year overdue project, and well, all they have to do is go in and start I don't know, drawing pictures. If you look at exactly what this is, it would have been a hardcover art book containing all 31 of the drawings in black and white that would be there as well as in color, in addition to some of the still unseen sketches and unused drawings for a project. The book would also contain a unique 12-page full-color horror story in comic book form. So you could see exactly what this was supposed to have and... When you go out there and, you know, again, you think about all of the commentary that you end up with on Twitter, well, here are people begging for updates on this project five years after the fact. But worry not, folks. You know, after way too much silence around a year ago, he promised that things would start moving again, and of course they haven't. You know, unless you consider moving and him talking about horror this kind of stuff. You know, it's very interesting, too, because Richard, you know, he has time to go and pick up work out there. I mean, that's the telling thing. It's a telling thing, too, that DC Vertigo, they find these types of folks, uh, the type of people they want representing brands. And when you look at what they're involved in, ah, yeah, they're the kind of things that, of course, they're going to go out and they're going to be polarizing subjects. Now, personally, I don't mind that there are books like this out there. I do mind the fact that, well, if you were to take this type of subject and you were to apply it to someone else, people like Richard out there would be lambasting you. But here, it's A-OK. In fact, it's not only A-OK, it's something that you strive and thrive to reproduce. But you can see this picture here he created, and it said, you're the real racist. I mean, you can imagine what's there. And you can see what Edwin Boyette, you know, he was reposting something that had tired of 
seeing alt-right types insisting the people fighting against hate and for equality of opportunity are the true villains. We see you for who you are. So, I mean, that is pretty much Richard telling you where he stands. Gets commentary about that stuff. And, of course, it goes a little like this. Comics gate nut bar. Crazy Eddie rides to the defense of the Klan. It shouldn't be surprising since he has repeatedly denied allegations of a white supremacist after a history of questionable statements on the subject. So, right here, you know, of course, he is tying someone in to the Klan. He is tying them in to white supremacy. He is going out and he is trying to lambast them. Now, I find that to be pretty particularly interesting considering some of the comments that they've had in the past, you know, when they were discussing this. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this here, but this little conversation here, you know, this little conversation, he actually has it uh, told to him that Edwin, he is not married to a white person, but yet, of course, he's a white supremacist. You know, he lives in Hawaii. He works around people that he talks about all the time. You know, he is surrounded by people that, well aren't white, and yet he's supposedly a white supremacist. You know, we see the vernacular of folks like Richard leaking through time and again, and that vernacular, of course, Nazi, 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 white supremacist. I mean, it's just, it's amazing to go through. It's not surprising, but again, when you look at what is represented here and how This moves towards being uh, not just indifferent or intolerant, but out and out, again, discrimination. Yeah, when people call that out, folks like this don't like it. Here, of course, this guy has always been very much of a stalker. So, not only is he part Nazi here, not only is he a defender of the Klan, but also, well... You know, he's now a stalker. So adding the idea of the guy might be a white supremacist to stalker and on isn't that fun. But continuing, going out of his way to comb my Facebook to find something to be offended by. The coward is posting about me while posting about me. I guess that's white nationalist uh, bravery for you. So right here. He doesn't even deny that, hey, you know, those statements are questionable. Oh, no. He straight up calls the guy a white nationalist. Isn't that lovely? I mean, truly. And, of course, when you go through these comments, you find a lot of people out there that want to tell you, ooh, that guy there, ooh, he's a monster. He's a monster because he thinks that this type of rhetoric, it's dangerous. It's dangerous because, of course, when you look at it and you truly examine what it's trying to say, well, what is it trying to say, really? Is it trying to go out and to make a point? Or is it trying to say that people who have different thoughts about, I don't know, voting, (laughs) those people out there, they don't just represent a different thinking process. Oh no, they represent commodities like hatred, commodities like intolerance. You know, when you look at that and you look at the commentary from a lot of these people, I would say, look in the freaking mirror. Because it looks like, well, you're reflecting those things that you say that you uh, you don't want to represent. Yeah, you're reflecting them pretty well. Fun, too, to see people like Mark Russell up in the fray. I mean, you see all the same people again and again. Connection to Pizzagate and on. You know, most uh, anyone wearing a MAGA hat isn't a victim. Yeah, I mean, this stuff, it's very telling, like I say. But anyhow, you give me your thoughts on this kind of stuff. Doesn't it really matter? make you want to go out and buy comic books. I mean, when I see this kind of stuff, it truly, truly makes me want to buy comics. You know, this guy, though, he's one of those people that, yeah, I've had a very, very fun run in with. You know, at one time, uh, I was actually buying the Tim Seeley written book, uh, Imaginary Fiends, and Richard decided to bumble into a conversation, insult and denigrate people as sexists, as racists, and on, and then decided to block me. I complained about it very 
very loudly. And well, Richard, he apologized and unblocked me, but only until buying that title was finished. And then, lo and behold, I was a monster again, and boom, back to the block. That's the kind of people you deal with there. You know, your wallet's nice, but of course they don't feel like they have to respect you. They don't have to respect your money. And, of course, they don't have to abide by live and let live. That's one of the reasons, many reasons out there, why I do not like this current landscape. Because when you look at books out there, I mean, when you think about this, these folks will tell you, hey, you know, this is my private thoughts. These are my private interactions. Although you see that they're going to be at certain places. Of course, their names are tattooed across the books that you buy. You know, apparently, personal, when people run across you on that, you're not supposed to think, hey, professional. Even though your name's tied to products out there, you could be going out and spending a lot of money on stuff. No, that stuff, it does it matter. All those insults, they don't matter. Here, give me your checkbook. Isn't that lovely? Anyway, tell me what you think. If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting the channel. Nail that subscribe button. Make sure that you like videos that you like. Smack that bell around because that bell, it really likes that. And if you want to go further, there are links within the description. Also, leave comments because I want to know exactly what you think about stuff. And as always, I want to end by thanking you because, well, you show up. You make these things work out. So thank you. I appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow probably.